Yeah. Uh, the creator of Ruby. <laughs> this is Matt's. Hi, Matt's. We have a camera here on the screen, and then you can see the people behind us up there. So, uh, Matt's uh, generously agreed to speak with me briefly before we start pairing. We've got about five minutes to talk about types. Yeah. Because people had a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. well, you said in your keynote that uh, you don't want to add types to Ruby. No, type right. annotations. Type annotations. You don't want people to have to write something to mm -hmm. make type work in Ruby. But does that mean that, wh what do you mean by that? Uh, actually, the, the Ruby has types. It, it is called the dynamic typing. Right. Uh, the, every object knows the type. So that, so if we make something so that we will have the type errors, right. but at the run time. <laughs> so the, some other language has static typing, which every ex expression, every variable, every method has uh, the static typing uh, determined by in compile time. Yes. That means that you can have the type contradiction in error in compile time. So you can find more bugs in compile time. So that it's a matter of the timing, but we will do the, the check anyway. Right. So if I try to do something that shouldn't be allowed in Ruby, mm -hmm. right, if I'm uh, trying to divide a string, mm -hmm. right, to treat a string as an integer or something, in some cases I can do that in Ruby. I can yeah. multiply a string by five, but yeah, I yeah. can't divide a string by five. Yeah. Right? So we use type inference to do that now. Uh, in some some language, uh, do the time type inferencing, but uh, Ruby don't. Okay, and so uh, when you say you don't want to have type annotations, you don't want me as a developer mm -hmm. to have to say this is an integer, this is a floating point, mm -hmm. right? This is a string. But if in the future it became possible for the compiler to do something smart, yeah, and yeah. just know then we would do it at compile time and we would be able to use mm -hmm. these types of uh, type contradiction errors mm -hmm. to find bugs earlier? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had, okay, what, what in, in order? Okay, I, I admit the, the benefit of the static typing so that in many programming language, static pr type programming language, uh, we can find more bugs in compile time so that we can find more bugs uh, uh, earlier right. so that uh, our software could be more reliable. Yes. Uh, the, that is the, the clear benefit. Yes. I admit that. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, uh, so that many uh, static type programming language uh, y uses the nominal typing, which re uh, reduce the, some kind of the flexibility of the so-called duck typing. So nominal typing, can you tell me what nominal typing is? Uh, nominal typing is that you can provide, a, okay, th this argument is a string. Yes. So you can provide uh, the, the string as an argument or its string or its subclass ah. as, a, uh, the, as an argument of the string type. Okay. Uh, th so that, it must be directly uh, related to the string class. Okay, so, so I can that, say that means any of its yeah, as well. yeah. Could that be. means that okay, in Ruby we have the string uh, okay IO class and the string IO class, yeah. which has the same interface, but uh, not the the inheritance relationship. Right. So that in nominal typing, because they are not the related. So that we, you cannot provide string I/O as an I/O. I see. Okay. But that in duck typing, so we focus on the behavior or interface. Yes. So that we can put the string I/O as an I/O because it behaves like an I/O. If it quacks, I don't care what it is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And this is, I think, the object-oriented concept mm -hmm. of describing behaviors rather than what the thing mm -hmm. is. So. In the future, you think it's possible we will have a compile time check, but a long time from now, mm -hmm. when compilers get very smart. You said in your keynote, I think, 2030 or 2040, maybe. 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 But for now, you don't want to add type annotations because it's uh, more work for developers. Mm -hmm. 
and because it uses nominal typing, mm -hmm. which would force us to not be able to treat a string I.O. as an I.O., for an example. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This makes sense to me. Yeah. I appreciate you taking uh, the time. Yeah. The in, okay, in this decade, 2010s, uh, the many popular programming languages became the static type programming language. So like uh, we have the Go, Swift, those uh, static type programming, oh, okay, Rust. Yeah. And then those programming languages are static types programming languages, and very, very uh, they are very popular. And then that's, and then for for example, we have the TypeScript for Java, JavaScript right. that that add the uh, static typing to the language. Okay, the Python three uh, introduced the type annotation that requires some kind of that uh, that static typing. Oh, so I was just, I just learned Python last week or the week before at PyCon, whenever it was. I was at PyCon and I learned Python mm -hmm. there doing this, uh, but I never told any, any of my variables what type they were mm -hmm. in Python 3, but I could have yeah. if I wanted. It's an optional, yeah, optional. static typing they've added. But Actually, it, it is so, so optional, so the, the Python compiler does, does, does not do any type checking. You can write them. Oh. You can write type annotation as a say some kind of the documentation or reference, I see. but uh, it doesn't do anything. So it doesn't actually affect the compile time step, which is the value of static typed languages. You think? Yeah, part of. Okay, but it's also about documenting for the next person to come mm -hmm. along. This should always be. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. We should pair. We are now into our pairing time. <laughs> we have we have a three forty uh, for the next uh, forty minutes. We're going to pair on a on a game of life. You want to yeah. write game of life with me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that sound fun? Okay. We can write anything. I don't. We could pair on uh, Ruby. We could pair on whatever you want. But I have a, a game of life rules here. You mm -hmm. want to do pair of game of life? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll go into our play here. I use use Emacs, don't you? I I use Emacs, but yes. uh, it's okay. Okay. This is Yo's solution. Oh. Yeah. It's really <laughs> confusing and long. It took us 40 minutes to figure out what that does. This, but it uses uh, this yield self. This was in your key keynote here. Yeah. Yeah, the yield self name, <laughs> right? <laughs> and we changed, she, uh, Yo originally had size was S, but because you told us names are important, we changed it to size. Mm -hmm. We went through and changed it all. It's a very confusing solution. Uh, you should watch that one. It's a good, a good stream. So uh, let's see. If I go back in here, uh, let's right. Okay. Now this is our empty. Oops. We don't want that actually. Why do I? Why do I still have that? I should have had. Oh, I checked out your branch. I'm sorry. I checked out your branch from um, from Yo's branch. So I have to destroy your branch uh, first. Let's just uh, delete. Is that how I do it? Great branch, delete uh, Mats. Sorry, Mats. I have to delete you. Uh. Okay. <laughs> now I will check out another branch called Mats again. A whole new Mats. Oh, wait. No, that's not how I do it. How do I do that? Uh, oh, I made a branch. Git branch dash D is what I wanted, right? Oh, Git, sorry. Git I always forget. branch minus, minus D. capital D. Uh, yeah. Now I have to do delete. Okay. <laughs> and Git branch dash D, Mats. And now. I'm on master and I say git checkout mats and we have a new one. So this is the file. It's just empty, but it has rules. This is the rules here. So we have, we have rspec in here if you want to use rspec. Probably no tests. You want to write tests? <laughs> uh, I don't want if I, if I could. <laughs> yeah, we'll skip tests. So we're going to write game of life. And let's, so the rules for game of life. We have uh, maybe cells or whatever we want to call them, mm. right? On a, a board or a world or a grid, and a cell with fewer than two cells next to it gets lonely and it dies, mm -hmm. underpopulation. A cell with two or three live neighbors is perfect, it stays alive. And then if you have uh, more than three neighbors, you die, mm -hmm. overpopulation. If you have exactly three, you make a baby. Three cells make one new cell next to them. So if I had like uh, this kind of shape here, then in the next generation, they would add one here because that's a new cell there. If I have two cells like this together, they're, this one has one neighbor, the next mm -hmm. one has one neighbor, they both die. Now they're gone in the next generation. 
So in the end, we end up with a game. Let's see this here. I can do. I'm gonna um, stash this here, and we'll go back to Yo's branch just because uh, uh, Yotan's actually runs. If I ruby this, it'll give us. It'll show us what it looks like. See, so you can have these shapes, hmm. and they move down across the screen like this. They do a lot of different things, uh, but it, the, all of the behavior is described just by those cells next to each other, mm -hmm. living and dying, right? Okay, so let's go back over to Matt's. Uh, I guess I didn't have to stash those changes necessarily, but I did, so here we are. Um, <coughs> what would you build first? Uh, probably, I don't know. We have to decide how the, the field or cells should be dis uh, represented. Right. So we should start with a cell. Yeah. Should we make a class for a cell? Uh, or do we want to just use a cell? We don't. Maybe we don't want a class yet. Do you think we need an object yet? We we don't need object yet. Okay. Yeah, we just just plain array is good enough, I guess. All right. So why don't you tell me what to type and I'll just do it. You you navigate and tell me what <laughs> I should do. So the how? Okay. It's. It's two-dimensional, right? Yeah, I think two-dimensional. We could do three-dimensional if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the game breaks in three dimensions, mm -hmm. I would guess. Okay, how, how big is the field? As big as you want. Uh, Infinite? Infinite. <laughs> uh, if we use X and Y, we could just store like a tuple in a key. Mm -hmm. X, Y is the tuple, and then it points to the cell. And then we just put it all in a hash, and we always we can have cells wherever. There's no size. Yeah. Okay. Just just use plain a uh, plain array. Arrays. Okay. So I have my my grid world. What yeah. do you want to call it? Board. <laughs> world. Board. Board. Because it's a game. Oh. Okay. Yes. Right. All right. And this is going to be <laughs> array.new like this. Here, mm -hmm. yes? And I want uh, array.new how many times? How many arrays do you want here? Uh, say 20 by 20. 20 by 20. So 20 times. And then in here, I make another array. It's arrays of arrays. Uh, yeah. Yeah? Or do you want just one array? We could do one. We could make one that is 400. And they just are all in one big array. Yeah, l let's try that. Okay. And so we open up our, our array here. And inside here we have a cell. But by default, maybe this, this value is just nil or something? Uh, what is our default value for a cell? Uh, yeah. The life did. Okay, zero. Zero? Yeah. Okay, so w zero is dead, one is alive. One, one is alive. Okay, so now we've got 400 dead cells in our array. It's a board. Okay. And now, for that board, we need to be able to, uh, to turn some of them al alive. Mm -hmm. How do you want to turn them alive? Do you want to just randomly? Yeah, but uh, you know, the, there are several famous uh, patterns in life games, so that you just just put the uh, some kind of uh, a famous pattern. A famous pattern. So like the ones there's ones that are like uh, one one one. That's that will turn it like three on its side like this. Tick mm -hmm. tick tick. There's the glider that walks. Yeah. Like Yo used. So what would you like to start with here? Yeah. Whatever, but uh, yeah, okay. One 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 is probably one easy. Yeah. Because we otherwise we have to do a lot of math mm -hmm. to figure out. Yeah. So. So the bold. Uh, board zero. Board zero is one. One, and then okay. We copy three lines. Okay. Yeah, and the I'll one, two. One two. Yeah, one, two. All right. So now our first three are this. The three ones. But in the top, if we do it in the top left corner, then it goes off the board when it turns. Uh, yeah. So we have to do it in the next row, which would be like uh, 20, 20, 21, 21, 20, 20, 21, 22. Is that right? 
Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, because the last one would be 1920, 21, 22. Okay. Yeah. So this is our row, second row. All right, so we've got our three alive cells. And then we want to... The we want to go... Yeah, one scan, to scan the cells. Scan all of the cells and figure out uh, how many live neighbors we mm -hmm. have, maybe. Yeah. So would we go... We go through the whole. We'd say like board dot each. I want to yeah. go through board dot each here, or map, or count, or map. 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 Use the new board so that otherwise, uh, if you if we modify the the original board, the 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 generation will be mixed up so that map will be the better. Map is better. Okay, so we're gonna map. Do you want one one liner or do? Okay, do it. Okay. Yeah. Do okay. It. And so here, when we are looking at this, we are looking at a cell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you have to assign the uh, the result of the map to the new board. New board. So we'll just make this new board like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just board is okay. Oh, okay. Just board is okay. We'll just reassign the board. Yeah. So now we map over each of the cells. Uh, no, cell is not really this. good. Uh, the map, map with index, map dot with index. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, this is a new feature in Ruby? Well, it's not new, it's, this is always it's, it's not new. How, when did that come in? I've n I don't use this very often. Oh, really? Uh, why <laughs> isn't it this? Why, do, why did you make uh, each with index with an underscore and map with index with no underscore? Uh, map dot with index. But why, why not an underscore? Uh, because why not with underscore? Principle because we don't ha we don't have the map underscore with index. Method. Oh, it does the methods not there. So you just call you. Can I call with index on other things that are not? Mapped? Yeah, yeah. Like what? Like any each dot with index is okay. Oh, I can actually say each dot with index. Yeah. But uh, then each with index is just. Yeah, we alias. have each with index, but uh, the we um we add the each with. Uh, each with index as a special case, but uh, at the afterwards we add uh, the okay the blockless each to return the enumerator or uh. the blockless map, so that we now we can do that dot with uh, with dot with index method on t onto the, the so the enumerator. reason it's dot with index now is it used to be that you just had a special case for each with index mm -hmm. only yeah each with index is the special case okay. this is uh, added way before the the enumerator okay. Added to the language. So now we're going to say map more, uh, board map with index for each cell. And uh, yeah, the uh, you have to add the, the cell oh, the index, right? index. Yeah. So this is going to be here. We'll put index. Like index. This yeah. All right. Good. So the now you have index, so that you can uh, look around the board and count the neighbors kind of based neighbors. on the index and the size. Should we make the size a variable up here? Uh, probably. Should it would be like um, size equals 20 and then this is 20 times 20 in here? Yeah. Okay. So we'll just say size times size here. When you write code, do you put spaces here? Like if you're uh, writing Not really. really. You don't? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I like a compact code. Compact code. So when you write it, you don't put spaces around the multiplication. No. Code. Okay. So size times size. So we have. Now we're going through. Okay. Okay. So this could actually be uh, probably like size plus zero is what we want to get the first one in the second row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So for our, our first neighbors, we need to find the neighbors all the way around, the eight neighbors all the way around where we are in the cell. So think about how to do that while I just type this in here. And then inside here, if we say, um, we can index back into board, right? Mm -hmm. So we could just say like board, if we want to find the neighbor that is the top left of us, and we're at uh, 20 even, mm -hmm. we're on like the line eight location, uh, then I would want to index in at uh, the one above it. Uh, or where we should one line above, so, so the we're in go off the edge though. Yeah, index minus size. Minus size. Okay. This is going to be um, 
So maybe I will just make a note here. This is like one uh, one line or north. This is north. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you have you have the index must be more than twenty because negative index works differently. Negative index will wrap around to go to the yeah. other side. So this here we have to. Uh, we only do this if, if it's, should we next? Should we next if it's, if we do it, we could check, we could say index minus size next if index minus size is less than zero? Uh, or if negative index, you wrap around, okay, no, no, you don't have, you, you don't have to check. You don't have to check. Okay, uh, both index minus size, uh, no s minus one, Minus one, and so then I want to do this again. Uh, minus size. Uh, oh wait, we have to do minus one zero plus one. Okay. In in uh, in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And then um, zero, and so this is just for illustration's sake, obviously. I guess this should all just be like pluses here. So we could actually use this. We could do something like this, like negative one, zero, one. Mm -hmm. And then we go through each. Yeah. <laughs> we get sum. We give it a block. But we want to do it. We want to do it twice, huh? I'm making it too complicated. I think, Matt. Yeah. I think you're. I like your approach better here. I'm making this too complicated. Okay, so we go minus one. I'm just trying to show off for you. Uh, you. Starting from the the size minus one, ah, uh, one, comma. Size minus one, comma, comma three. Here? here. Yeah. Dot sum. Dot sum in the width. Oh uh, yeah, the the next the bracket dot sum. Dot sum. Uh, the we have to count the. the a number Wait of the, uh, the are you you're indexing into the board like this with two numbers like zero <laughs> oh you're like slicing the yep. zero to two yep. right yes okay uh, then okay uh, okay you okay put the, the the variable sum equals zero on the top of the uh, the block in here sum equals zero okay then uh, the delete the next line, index minus size, yeah, double line. Okay. Okay. Then the, at the top of the top of the line, three is okay. Three is okay. Yeah. But we always want three. Is it always three? It's going to be. Oh, is it the next three elements? Next three elements. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, the okay on the no 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 the top of the top of the line sum plus equal. Sum plus equal, then the con yeah the co the join the next line. Yep. This one here. So then this yep. dot sum, and this is the north. No, this is no north, north three. It's also north northeast, or it's northeast. North north, east, north northwest. northwest. Okay. Then okay. you copy the line. Then. So minus size is above us. Index is us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't we don't we don't want minus size for this one. But yeah. we also we want minus one to three, but not counting us. Uh, mm. So we could just say minus our value here, right? Minus board. Yeah. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Does that work? Yep. Okay. And then this one here, we Should say plus uh, index plus size. Index plus size. Uh, minus one. And go, okay. So this is going to be, uh, let's say this is west and east. And then this one here is going to be uh, south, south east yeah, and south, south and southwest. And southwest. Okay. So now. Now we have the the sum, sum, 
we have the sums. We now map the board, and each what was a cell, it was either one or zero, is mm -hmm. now a number, which is the number of neighbors that that cell has. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we can use that to then build another board that has all of those cells alive. We can go through and we can say, if we find a three, mm -hmm. then it should be whatever it was before. Uh, then, Okay, we have to return based on those sum. The if the sum is less than two. Oh, for each in in here, you want me to say if sum is less than two? Yeah. Okay. It should uh, return zero because it's dead. Right. Else if if sum. It's uh, if it's two or three, it stays alive. If it's yeah. greater than three, it dies. Yeah. So if you want to do greater than three here? Get that one out of the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Zero. Zero. Else if uh, dead with dead with three, so if it's a zero and it has three or three neighbors, if sum is equal to three and I'm zero. So like board, this is me, if board index equals zero and sum is equal to three, then I should be one again. Mm -hmm. Okay, put the, that line on the, t on the top of the if. Okay, this should be the top case. Yeah, it's the top. Okay. Why, why is that the top case? Uh, because the because uh, the above three conditions, uh, above three rules should be applied when uh, it's it is alive. Oh, so that means the if it's dead, if it's dead, and it has three neighbors exactly, then the three cells, they have a baby and they make a new cell. They turn me into a one. Yeah. I was a zero and now I'm a one. And then, if... Wait, 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 wait. Uh, if... <laughs> no, okay. I think, I feel like this. Okay, if put the, instead of the one there, mm -hmm. put the if, Oh, inside. No, here. yeah, if, yeah, inside. Okay. If uh, sum equals to three, <coughs> three, it should return one. Otherwise, else, zero. And then remove the, uh, the, the first, first condition, the uh, second condition. This okay, one this one. Okay, so if the board index is zero, if I'm dead, and then, okay, if it's three, I see. So this is what happens when you are in a dead state. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, if... Is this a else here? Else? Yeah. And then this just is an if, just a nested if. Yeah. Oh, this does else if, okay. Yeah, this, this is same, I guess. My if the sum is less than two, or the sum is greater than three, Uh, you can combine these conditions, okay, sum less than 2 or sum greater than 3. If sum less than 2 or sum greater than 3, okay, okay. okay. remove so those lines, yeah. Here. Yeah. Okay. Then it should die, 0. 0. Is there an else? Else it returns whatever it was. Does it stay the same? We need our rules down here. Let's bring these rules down here so we can see them. Okay, so. So we should live because it should be one. Yeah. The end. Uh, I see, because we are only in here if we are. So this is our live block. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, we are, or we're dead. 
We'll just mark this with a comment here. We're dead, right? Dead. Yep. And then this is going to be live. Okay. And then is that all of our rules? I guess so. So any live cell with less than two, we come in here, we check we're not dead, we're alive. So we have less than two and we die. If we have two or three, we're alive and we have two or three. We come in here, we fail. We are not less than two and we are not greater than three. So we <coughs> return one and we live. And if we are alive with greater than three, then we die. And if we are dead with three, then we live from this one. Okay. I just ran the tests in my head. It works. <laughs> okay. I don't think yes. so. Yes. <laughs> so this is our, our if here. Yeah, this is one generation. One generation. So, so from one generation, <coughs> this whole thing, this board, going to the next iteration, would, do we have to? No, this just returns the one or the zero. So that's it. Yeah. And it won't <coughs> change for each step, since we're going each with index, we're mapping with index, we're going to change. So if I have in the top corner three that are alive, mm -hmm. right, then when I get to the next row, I've already changed these, oh, but only in the new board. Yeah. Yes. OK. And we haven't assigned yet until we're done with the whole mm -hmm. map. So it's like we have an immutable board yeah. that is the old board. So that's one generation, and it's done. Yeah. Then we have to print the board before the, the, the generation, because the, we have to print the first generation. We print the first generation. So we should print the board here. Yeah. Board dot each. Uh, with index. <laughs> each. Uh, do you, let's just do this. Then. Yeah. With the new syntax. I've been using outdated Ruby syntax forever because I always use an underscore there. I have no idea. OK, so now we can do what? Cell dot in cell, cell comma index cell because comma we index, have index. Yeah, we need the index, and then I'm going to put the the cell. Then the print uh, whatever. First print cell. Do you want to print like a character, like a Arctothorpe, or like a? Yeah, yeah. The, the number is okay here number for 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 the moment. Okay, we'll just use a number. I was yeah. suggesting in a module with my this is good. Okay, we'll print cell and then um, uh, the, con the semicolon. semicolon. Then if uh, say the index, uh, yeah, if index modulo by modulo twenty by modulo size, size. Yeah. equals zero. So now every time that. The index is, when it gets to 20, it'll be 0. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go a new line, and it'll hit down to the next one. So we'll print 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, until you get to 20, and then it goes to the next line, and it just works every time. So this is how we print our board one time. And then we want to do that same thing again after we iterate the board. Yeah. Yeah? For the, for the, yeah, for the moment, okay. time being. Do you want to put something in between so we have, like, so we can see a, a marker like puts like this, so we can just see the difference. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can run this, see if it works. I hope so. Hope so. <laughs> Me too. Okay, so we have. Uh, we tried to sum something new. Oh, look, our, our our ones are in the wrong place too. Oh, the first one it modulo zero. The first uh, zero must be. Oh. We put the. This one should not. It, if uh, zero. No. No. The the. The print cell ha should come after the the new line. Print. Mm, okay. So after this, we'll say like this. Print cell. Print cell. And we just want that same one up above. Okay. Yep. We might be ready for a method, I'm just saying. It might be time. So let's try it. One, okay. one, one. Yeah, so that's right. That the board looks right at first. But then we have a problem because we got some for a nil class on line 15. So on line 15, let's go look. 
we're summing nil. So sometime we go, uh, we're going off the top of the board, off the bottom of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, in that case. So... We could just put it, put this in a conditional, right? If I don't like that. No, I don't. I don't like that either. That was a bad idea that I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're thinking there's probably an elegant way <laughs> to do that with just the n the math in here. Just get to the end, and we don't care. So this, uh, the whole problem starts at the last row, so we try to index into 401 at some point. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, index plus size is bigger enough and the, you know, out of the... 401 to 403, we're trying to get 401 to 403. If this is bigger than oh, 400 the to 400, 400 to yeah, yeah, index, this plus size is bigger than yeah, minus negative one, three. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we could write an if. I had an idea. You can write <laughs> you can put it if <laughs> it's the same idea. I I only have that one idea. I don't know any other ideas. Mm -hmm. We could divide one of these numbers by size or something and then so Yo showed me a trick that I, I could count up and then <laughs> it's always, it's an integer division, it's always going to be zero. We'd be adding zero, I could subtract yeah. integer division, which would always be zero. It must be be much simpler if nose equal whoops nose equal in index minus size uh, south equals in index plus size hmm. And the west equal index minus one, uh, east equal index plus one. Then, oops. So let me do it. You're an Emacs user, right? <laughs> Aren't you? Do you use Emacs? I use Emacs. So I'll just type these for you. So this is index, you, this should be index minus size minus uh, one. No, 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 this is not re required. We don't want to do this yet. Okay, then the sum plus equal uh, board uh, board nodes. Yeah. No, the board. Yeah. That's enough. Just that. Just over and over again. So yeah, before that, you have to put the uh, the okay the end of the, the that line. Mm -hmm. uh, put the rescue rescue zero. Hmm. I see. So this is going to rescue and return zero anytime that this throws an error. Mm -hmm. Do we want to rescue the specific type of error? No. No, we don't want to. <laughs> that was another bad idea <laughs> that I had. I can't believe I keep having all of these. Okay, so could we just do that down here? Can we just do rescue zero? Uh, because we we call sum, it's not 
the because we uh, rescue it, they just ignore the 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 part of the board. No, it won't work. It, it won't work. Okay. Again. So that yeah, you put the 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 nine. You copy the that that lines eight times. This one. Yep. And I'm gonna get rid of all this now. Yeah. We done with this? Can we we don't need them. Yeah, these are gone now. Okay. All right. So this is going to be north. We do, should I just do north, south, east, west, like this? Yeah, north, south, east. Uh, n north. We, we yeah. learned growing up never eat shredded wheat. That's how we, re we remember the directions. Uh, yeah, and then, then put it north, north minus one. Okay, north minus one. North minus one, north plus one. Plus one. Uh, Wait, south north plus, plus one. South north plus one is up higher. Oh no, it's over to the right. I see what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. South so plus one. South minus one. Right. Okay. And then this is going south to be plus south plus one. Plus one. Then we have everything, I guess. And they're all gonna rescue zero. Yep. And that's that. Do I hope so. Okay. I, I'm not sure. Let's run our tests, which is our code. No. Yeah. Nil. Which one? On line 24, can't be coerced into integer. It's a type error. Nil can't be coerced into integer. So let's look at number 24. Nil. So which, which one is trying to be nil? It says the plus on line 24. But there's a... It's here, S? No, S isn't trying to be nil. It has to be this mm. the result here. But wouldn't that rescue? It could return nil without, how do we have a nil in R array? Is that what's happening, you think? Uh, it's, it returns nil. Oh. The. <laughs> Okay, replace your rescue. Okay, on this line or all the lines? All, all the lines. Okay. In, in, nil, or, or what? Nil. Uh, no, no. But are we gonna check? Or, or all, yeah, zero. Or, or zero, like that? Yep. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that didn't work. Oh, I just keep <laughs> trying it. Like, all right, I'll just do it all manually. How about this? I wish I was a better Vim user. This makes me very shy in front of you. If this was Emacs, you'd be way faster, huh? I want to point out to everyone out there <laughs> who thinks that they should be shy about their code that I am pairing in front of Matt's, the man who wrote this language, like kind of a derp. Really not good at this game. Okay, but this is great, and you would prefer this to the or, right? They have different semantics, though. Uh, the the preceding order is different, but uh, semantically. Semantically, you like this just because it reads yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. So let's try it again here. Nope. No. What? What? Can't be coarse. Why review people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twenty-four. And 24. Are you? Is the S? S or nil? This is not the, the nil. Okay, the the, re the replace over by the, the double 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 oh, bar. Gosh. I'm not sure. <laughs> gosh, why doesn't it? <laughs> somebody tell me how to do that and what I'm trying to do here in Vim. <laughs> CW, thank you very much. CW, Barbar, and then I can dot. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Now I can go back over here. Oh, we did it. It works, too. Look at that. If you scroll up, you can see that our ones that were sideways, they turned. Yeah. So now we just have to go and, and actually do the right thing. Okay, put the uh, those lines in and okay. 
surround them by loops. By loops. Should I put this into a method here, this one? I no, really want no. 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 Just, just put the loop, loop do. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. No, no, before that. Uh, before that, okay. Before that, yeah, loop line do. A, loop do. Then, yeah, put them, then shift. <laughs> okay. Then, uh, okay, let me go down. Then remove that line because we don't we, we just don't, we don't need over again. Yeah. And then we want to we have to the yeah uh, put the do you want to clear the output? Clear the output. Escape character size. Loop. Yo taught me that trick. We could do escape character size and go up. Mm -hmm. Uh you well probably you put the some some uh the the new lines. New lines. Also oh, we just blow it away and then yep. okay. So then, do we want to sleep first, uh, second, so it doesn't just go so fast? Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> so we we'll just one. like sleep point one. Yeah. And then we would just, uh, that's, we should put a bunch of new lines? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then it will always come down at the bottom one. Mm -hmm. That won't. We'll see what that looks like. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> you just wrote the game of life. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Matt. Nice job. Yeah. That was really impressive. <laughs> we didn't use any. Uh, our first thing is always we make cells. And I like this part here. There is we orient the arrows. This is a good, uh, an elegant solution to that problem. I kept trying to add if if blocks. You didn't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, too many conditionals. <laughs> yeah. So if I wanted to have other shapes on the board, I can just put them all. I could feed them all in here. We could randomize the whole board real quick. Yeah, could be. We should just do that like this, like uh, on the board here. We just say uh, what like. Oh, you can just say rand one zero zero one, right? Something like this. But there's some the range, right? Random zero or one? Random two, I guess. Two? Is better? Ah, uh, I don't remember that. I think I zero, or you don't remember if it's random. It's uh, hard, it's confusing, right? Because it's, it's always going to be like, it's going to be some under one. Yeah. Should we Google it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's remember. Google it, Matt. <laughs> what, what would you Google? Yeah. <laughs> the run method? You would Google like Ruby Rand. <laughs> Rand method? <laughs> <laughs> like here in the random 2.2, 2.4. That looks good. I like that's closer to where we are. I think we're on 2.5. Let's click there. Rand, rand, right? Random new. Maximum number. When max is an integer, rand returns a random integer greater than or equal to zero, and less than max. So yep, two. Two. So, so two, two okay. will always be. Either one or zero, mm -hmm. which is what we want. So now we will have a randomly generated board to present for you Matt's game of life. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> Thank you so it much, works. Matt, for coming. <laughs>